Welcome back, folks. Lighthead Online Video Show. To today's show, we just interviewed Cliff Yankee of Indigo Clean. Uh, he's making, uh, who makes light fixtures that actually kill bacteria. So we just interviewed him. We're going to have a talk with Greg and I to sort of unpack what we learned from Cliff. But before that, we got to tell you that this episode of the show is brought to you by Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com. Greg, KeystoneTech.com, light made easy. We need that sometimes in this confusing lighting world, and Ooh. Keystone does a great job of that, getting us the right product, right time, right price, everything about it. KeystoneTech.com, folks, K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com. Well, we talk a lot. We've heard a lot of people talk about the 330-300 rule, so 330-300. Um, this Indigo Clean thing, uh, bacterial, when they're talking about the surgical operation operating rooms, I think it is in the 300 zone, Greg. Yeah, to me, it sounds like it is because it's a definable uh, benefit in the, for people. You can look at it, and he, he gave us some percentages. I think he said that, you know, by using this technology uh, that you can reduce, uh, what was it, infections in operating rooms by 70% or greater. Yeah. Like, that's a big number, dude. That's a huge number, yeah. When you think about all the uh, the cases they have to do, and, you know, I don't, I don't know how prevalent it is or how often it happens, but it does happen enough where – Every hospital, every operating room needs to consider, you know, lawsuits and, and things that come up. The that biggest is. issue, the biggest issue for any surgical department is number one, better outcomes for patients, right? So if you go in, Greg, if you go in for your, your let's say your appendix burst or your gallbladder burst, you go in, you have your appendix removed and then you get a staph infection or something like that. That's a really bad outcome um, for the patient. So from when it comes from the patient care perspective, this is better. And then, like like I said to Cliff, to be a little crass, I mean, there's a payback there. I mean, the legal fees for litigating, even to open up the books of a litigation, you're talking $10,000 just to open the books, and then you start to walk down that road. It's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars a year for hospitals. Right. And he said for about a 25% increase in what the fixture would cost, that you can actually get this technology built into it. I mean, granted, right now you have to replace what's in there existing, New construction, I think it's a no-brainer for an operating room that's brand new. You know, some of the retrofits and things, it sounds like they're working on retrofit technology, but um, I'm not sure, you know, how effective, cost-effective really isn't the thing, or it's not, it's it's kind of tough for me to, you know, get a handle on because we're so used to energy savings and paybacks yeah. and things. Have you had, like, this is the first show ever had, like, who cares how much the energy costs to do this? <laughs> exactly. It, it's yeah. not even relevant. Like, if you, if this no. thing actually works, it like, the energy cost is in that three zone, and you're already up in the 300 zone. So if you, I think he said it, uh, the um, director of surgery at some hospital had told him if it stops one infection, mm -hmm. you get your money back. Yeah. Like, one infection. If it helps one infection a year, all the money's, uh, money, you get all the money back for the the expense on the project. You know, I don't know how electrical distributors and lighting distributors get involved in this, Greg. It's like the, it's like the, it reminds me of horticultural, but even worse. Yeah, it's good. It is. It, it's very defined niche market, but I, I definitely see enough clean rooms and even the manufacturing facilities I use and how clean they are. I don't know. I don't really ever get into that, but you know, this would be a good option that I have had to replace fixtures and, and done clean room light fixtures. Now, if you could have uh, the ability to clean the space from the light, which something like this does, from visible light, I think it, it, it makes sense to have it in your your toolkit, you know, as to say. Yeah, I mean, I think you whip it out, you know, so you're doing some uh, pharmaceutical factory or something like that, and they have these clean rooms where they sort stuff. I, You know, I mean, for us, that yeah, I'm in that realm. But from the hospital perspective, I find the hospitals get locked up by other parties out there. It's tough to penetrate yeah. that world. You know, no, I think I, I'm sure there's some people listening though that have the capability to do that. You and I talk a little, and we don't really get into that market a lot. Um, but to me, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, he talked about the other cleaning technologies they use right now, where it's chemical based or UV lighting or something that's not always there. With this visible light disinfection, it's always in the space, so it's constantly disinfecting. Which, you know, it's always better to do that versus one big blast of cleaning well what really freaked me out about it too is when he was talking about okay you have the surface right so you have a surface but then there's all this bacteria uh bacterial precipitation i think what did he call it <laughs> yeah that's exactly what he called it it's raining bacteria it's ra basically <laughs> raining bacteria throughout the room in this surgical space and so like it's like 
it, you're like swimming in this soup of bacteria, <laughs> you know, and, and the lights are, um, you know, are killing the bacteria in the air. And it was really blew me away was I, I was about to question it. And when he said the, the room next to it got uh, a better bacterial infection rating because of the air exchange between the room that they were testing and the room next to it. And I was like, ah, I don't know, maybe this stuff isn't working at all. And it's just a bad study. But he said the one across the hall, which was on a separate HVAC system, did not receive any benefit. So this idea of killing bacteria while it's still in the air is like, is mind boggling to me, but awesome at the same time. Yeah. The, the fact that it has that capability is really shows you where lighting is going. And, and it's talked about all the time, but until now, I don't know if I've really seen anything with, you can see the health effects of lighting on, you know, this is a truly healthy benefit to lighting. It's yes. not 65 K, which by the way, this is above me right now, 65 K. So that's, that's why, why you look like crap today. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Cause we're getting our system commissioned. So I'm at 65 K in here, but it's definitely different. But um, yeah, the circadian thing to be determined yet, something like this where you can actually clean and it shows studies and it's effective. That's healthy lighting. I think it goes back to the meme we created with the first do no harm. It's like, can you do something that reduces harm first? Because that's always easier than the, promoting that, you know, hey, there's less infections. How do you prove that? Well, we have two operating rooms at this university. This one we did 20 surgeries. This one we did this. And, you know, you, re you replicate that in double blind surveys. You don't know which one has the lights and which one doesn't. You test and whatever. You can prove that. This idea that, you know, that we can actually, okay, so now we're not doing harm. Oh, no, we're actually promoting human health. Well, what if, you know, uh, how do you do that? Like, how do you say, oh, you know, people are less depressed? I mean, uh, Dr. Arnold Wilkins did it when he did the two buildings that were, you know, basically identical, one with T12, one with T8. But, I mean, you've got to measure that for a long time. And nobody's come forward with a research-based double-blind survey saying circadian, our circadian photobiological biological lights are actually improving these uh, less headaches, better sleep, um, all this other stuff. i got to see that before we start. I love this first do no harm meme, man. That's, I love it. That's yeah, like. we're, that's from the Hippocratic Oath or whatever. First yeah, line. from the Hippocratic Oath. Yeah. So it's like, first <laughs> of all, don't do harm. Like, don't infect people with staph bacteria. Don't smash them with flickering LEDs. You know, like that's that will that causes harm. So don't do that. So it, no. like this is the stuff I like. This is where, you know, you're in the realm of, OK, we know that's good. Um, mm -hmm. the, the other one, the other stuff when you're into like, you know, oh, this is going to make you happier, relieve depression. That's where it starts to get a little bit, I don't know, son. Yeah. You can't define that. It's, it's out there and you just are making statements that are not backed by anything though. Really. So you know what you should do, Greg? What's that? Go to keystonetech.com. That's <laughs> K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com. Light made easy. Thanks for listening to the Lighthead online video show.